The stealth craft made it back to Sochi all right? Da. Safe and sound. No repairs necessary. Some routine maintenance and she will be as good as new. Good to hear. I'm guessing that thing doesn't come cheap. Well, an old Soviet army friend gave me discount. He runs a PMC, specializing in airborne warfare. An air force for hire? <laughs> That's a new one. Ever since SOP, Merck started to fill more and more regular combat duties. SOP ended, but the trend did not. Most every modern military relies on PMC support in one way or another. Good news for Maverick, I suppose. Anyway, that's quite the little jet your friend has. I was expecting a lot of turbulence coming in that low, but she was smooth as silk. Didn't feel like I was a bird exactly, but probably the next best thing. The MQ-133C uses a brand new type of active adjustment control system. Sensors on the plane take readings 120 times a second, and uh, to be honest, I don't know how it works. But the crew chief tells me this is what keeps her flying so steady. It is all state-of-the-art technology. There are only three of them in the entire world. Even the RQ-133 spy plane she is based on is only two years old. It is fitted specially for Cyborg. So maybe demand is a bit low now, but I think that will change soon, eh? Hmm. It's funny. Its guts are all bleeding edge, but from the outside, it looks almost retro. Until recently, stealth aircraft design was focused on radar absorbing materials and improving aerodynamics. But lately, engineers are trying to use the shape of the craft to do more than improve gas mileage. Maneuverability is a low priority. This kind of plane is not meant for dogfighting, after all. And we can afford all this? I hate to ask, but will we clear a profit on this op? You need not worry about such things. But yes, we should be fine. Where the proper equipment can make or break a mission, we should have the best. That miss with the anti-air missile last month was a painful reminder of this lesson. Ah, uh, yeah. I see what you mean. Huh. I didn't think flares could still fool anti-air missiles like that. They, uh, can't. At least not with any modern missile. Recent missiles rely on a dual wavelength or IIR system for guidance. Flares wouldn't fool either of them. But that was no recent missile I had. That Cusack Derma couldn't even take down a fat tilt rotor target. And at close range! Chort was me. Come on, Boris. We had no intel. No reason to think that we'd be facing anything like that. You budgeted for the tools appropriate to the job. No one blames you. Perhaps. In any case, now we know what we are dealing with. This is still a business, but this time I am stretching the budget as much as possible. Expenses like that aircraft and your new body are all part of this. Both were worth the money. This body's more capable than I could have imagined. I'm glad you feel this way since it is still company property. Remember, if you quit on us, you either return it or you buy it. Yeah, Boris. I remember the first five times you told me. Raiden, what I said about staying focused on the mission. Understood. No need to explain. I say this because I have been there. I have let my emotions take over on the battlefield. Some of the PMC work I did after my discharge was... They were gray area jobs, but that's all in the past. When I took on those former PLA soldiers to form Maverick, I laid out my conditions. We would only take operations we believed in, and we would run them clean, no exceptions. Most of them agreed. They had their own bad memories from their time in Paradise Lost. I can certainly attest to that. Yes, of course. I forget who I'm talking with. Most of the XPLA have moved on now, in any case. But the point remains the same. Everyone at Maverick is accountable for their actions. We are clear to take this job under international law. And we can use force against any cyborg hostiles under the basic rules of engagement. But remember, if we harm any civilians, on purpose or no, it will mean trouble. All kinds of trouble. So, stay in control and stay on mission. Got it. Raiden, if you ever get lost, use augment mode to check your next objective. By using augment mode, you can see enemy positions 
and the direction in which you should head. Useful for when you cannot find your objective on the Solitone radar. Sounds like Imani was a pretty great leader. Such a goddamn waste. I've run cover for a lot of VIPs, but men like him are a rare breed. He had all these conflicting factors to deal with. Old tribal tensions, business interests, the military. But Inmani got them all working together in a stable government, and all without firing a shot. The savior of a nation. No wonder they called him that. He had a gift, for sure. But he also put in the hard work. He was big on equality and justice in every aspect of government. He fought for it day in, day out. Inmani single-handedly energized his people. He's a big part of why the country recovered so quickly. True. It was more than new buildings and jobs. The people had hope again. If only we had someone like him back in Liberia. Things would have been different, that's for sure. And it was my job to protect him. Right, come on. And Monty wouldn't want me to go after Desperado. Not out of revenge, anyway. But he would want them stopped. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Right. That saying you like about your sword being a tool of justice? Yeah, it's why I fight. Sometimes taking a life saves others. A life, or two, or three, or forty in your case, but I know what you mean. Besides, it's not like those cyborgs you're fighting have been brain jacked. Wouldn't be much point in sending jacked cyborgs. True. Having someone pilot a body remotely only really makes financial sense for espionage missions. And you might as well use UGs if you're gonna let an AI control your soldiers. So yeah, they're probably using emotional restraints, but those cyborgs are fighting of their own free will. Starting to see where I'm coming from? I get it, it's just... You didn't used to seem so comfortable with the idea. Hmm. What about what Sam said? About your ideals holding you back? Ah, bullshit. He's good, but now I know how he moves, how he thinks, and I've got my new body. My philosophy says when and why to fight, not how. It won't keep me from beating Sam. And next time we meet, I will beat him. I'll kill him. And I'll do it to save others from suffering, with my ideals intact. All right, Ryden. One thing I can't stop wondering about, Kev. Hmm? What's up? Sam. If he wanted to kill me back on the train, he could have, easily. So, why didn't he? Good question. But I should be asking you. Your left eye was our only video feed. After he stabbed it, I, I got nothing. I mean, I got the details from your report after the fact, but that's it. He was probably just too distracted. Boris's attacks, escaping, there was a lot going on. No, that's not it. Well, why else? What does he have to gain from letting you live? <sighs> I don't know. Ryden, head for the oil refinery. No? Got something else for me? Yeah. You mentioned SOP before. How much do you know about it? The Sons of the Patriots system? Same stuff as anyone else in the industry, probably. Basically, a nanomachine software combo for controlling contractors used to be required for all PMCs. Soldiers couldn't fire unless their ID matched their weapon and they had clearance. From their commanding officers. And the rules of engagement, I mean. It had some mental effects as well. Moderating pain, enhancing concentration, that sort of thing. The idea was SOP would minimize arms smuggling and civilian casualties. A kinder, gentler war. An oxymoron, any way you look at it. Civilian deaths did drop, though. Because soldiers in the system could coordinate in real time, share info. Between that and the ID weapon locks, a lot of people felt better about employing privatized military. <laughs> the irony is, the system was developed based on criticisms of PMC ops, mostly American interventions. SOP propaganda said it would put limits on the war market. <laughs> what it really did was shift market share over to the PMCs. Civilian deaths went down, but total casualties just kept on climbing. More than ever, war was big business. And business was booming. 
until SOP got hacked. Suddenly, everyone realized how dangerous it was to have a single system controlling entire PMCs. That was the beginning of the end for SOP. Public opinion on privatizing war did a 180. After that, a lot of local conflicts and civil wars died down. The PMC conglomerates had to split up and downsize just to stay in business. And that about does it for SOP 101. Class dismissed. Not bad, Professor. But it's not the whole story. No, I know. Let's finish this later. I better keep moving. Need something else? I thought we'd get back to our little history lesson. What do you know about the Patriots? I know that they were behind everything we talked about before with the SOP system. People thought these 12 guys controlled world politics and the global economy from the shadows. And they were right. Except there weren't 12, and they weren't guys, or even human. They were massive AI networks. All the better to gather information on a global scale, or censor it if they wanted. They'd manipulate factions to keep wars raging, all while selling arms to both sides. The PMCs made billions too, of course. SOP was the Patriots' masterstroke. They could control battles directly, down to each individual soldier. The system might even still be around if the AIs hadn't all been destroyed. I'm impressed. You know your stuff. Not many people have even heard of the Patriots. More than when they were active, but still, not many. Almost no one knows they were AIs, or that they're the real reason SOP went away. Well, the few that do know aren't going to talk about it publicly. Even the world leaders. Especially the world leaders. The people would panic, assuming anyone believed them, which they wouldn't. You can find speculation on the net if you look hard enough. Some of them get pretty close to the truth, but the stories never made it into the mainstream. Just another conspiracy theory. I'm not surprised. It's a little hard to believe, you know? It just sounds crazy. When Kevin briefed me about all this in orientation, I thought it was some kind of BS detecting test. All right, then. Hey, Raiden, let me ask you something. The Patriots. Why would AIs do all of that? I can see why people would want all the money, but AIs? What did they stand to gain from it all? Who knows? Maybe they didn't even know. Optical Neuro AIs aren't your typical PCs. They learn over time, change in unpredictable ways. The core AI, JD, was bent on expanding the war economy. Maybe to fund the Patriots' other activities. Or maybe that's just the way it evolved, like a secondary objective that took over. One of the other AIs said it was created to filter out unnecessary information, gossip, trivia, all for the sake of future generations, to drive the evolution of the human race. Or so it said. Was that the truth? Or a lie? To manipulate me? Who can say? To think. Something like that. Running a nation. An America, no less. It's terrifying. Thank God they were all destroyed. But did it really change that much? Uh, maybe not. Contractors still gotta eat, after all. Soldiering for hire's always been a risky business, but at least before it was good money. There was a decent chance you could get rich and retire early. All that disappeared during the SOP years. Demand was high, but the workforce was flooded. More and more soldiers were willing to work for cheap. It got so you'd have to work years before you could even pay back your initial training and insurance fees. Yeah, I can see Sundowner's point. Uh, the global recession certainly didn't help. Unemployment shot up across the US and the EU. Even if contractors gave up and packed it in, there weren't any jobs waiting for them back home. The irony is the recovery was all war-driven. It wasn't a general recovery at all. Not only did globalization exploit the poor countries, but it crippled first world employment too. And SOP's gone. But now we've got these PMCs that are basically mobsters. Just thugs in uniform. Yeah, not a pretty picture. <laughs>